Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So it's been a while since I recorded my last video um, but I really wanted to show you how to properly do dark mode using Figma's, Figma's local variables. Um, this is super easy. I've not planned anything here so we're just going to jump in and learn how to do it straight away without a script. We're not... I'm just going to show you how easy it really is to do this. Okay so opening a new file um, and we've got our page here. I'm just going to call this my library page. So this is just where I'm going to set the colors and things like that. Um, I'm going to keep this really basic. I'm going to create um, the concept of a background, a container and a foreground. And we're going to kind of look at how that might work. So if I just quickly draw out some frame cubes, or not sorry, cubes, some squares, and we're going to call this background and then primary. So this is going to be our primary background. We're going to work in a light mode initially and then we're going to build out our dark mode from it or you could start the other way you could build out your dark mode and build your light mode it doesn't really matter but we're going to have a background primary secondary i can spell and tertiary so that's our background at the moment there's no colors here we're just building out the structure so we're going to do the same for our container and I'll explain a little bit more about what these are in a minute. So I'm not worrying too much about color systems, that kind of thing at the moment. You would apply your color system to these. Um, that's not the focus of this video. This is just building out the structure, learning how to create the variables, and then you can start building your light and dark mode designs uh, with very little effort. Uh, okay, and now we're going to do our foreground, which I am having a lot of trouble spelling today. Let's copy that, copy that. Okay, so our background primary, we're going to go with a solid white for this, just for ease of use. So we've got our solid white here. Our background secondary, what we're going to do is Again, I'm really not focusing on the colors here, so really don't worry about uh, using pure blacks and things like this. This is purely just demonstrations. Okay, so our background secondary is going to be 10% black, and our tertiary is going to be, in fact, do I wanna do that? Let's make that 5% black, and then let's make our tertiary 10% black. Okay. The background's kind of hard to see here, so I'm just going to change the background color a bit so we can see it a little better. Maybe use a little bit of blue there so we can see it. Okay, so still a little bit tricky to see, but it's fine. Okay, so our container. So essentially the theory here is our background colors are going to be used for our backgrounds, pretty straightforward. For primary areas, we're going to use the primary. Then for kind of any background area, like a panel, that sits on top of the primary area. Maybe we use our secondary based on what the importance is. And then we have our tertiary for say a, a another panel that is lower down in the hierarchy. Containers we're gonna be using for things like uh, anything that contains something essentially. So this could be our cards, this could be um, our text areas, our text fields, that kind of thing. Um, we're just going to use that. You would probably have other colors like variables for things like your buttons we're not going to focus on that today we're just going to keep it simple with this and then our foreground is going to be anything that's on the foreground that could be icons that could be text obviously it doesn't apply to images but these would be our icon and text colors um, again primary being the the main most important thing secondary being the next and tertiary being the the least Okay, so our container, uh, just for keeping this simple, our container is going to sit on top of our background. And if we use our alpha system here, a container with um, a black of 5% is still going to appear on top of our background secondary or tertiary. And same as primary. So even though our container primary is 5% and so is our background secondary, 
when they sit on top of each other, you might be able to see it's quite possibly a little bit tricky with, uh, there we go. You'll be able to see that there is some contrast there still. So we're just going to use alpha channels for that particular reason. Um, I'm going to do 10% here, then I'm going to do 15% here. Again, not thinking too much about uh, the colors here. This is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so our foreground primary, as it's going to sit on top of things like our background primary and these, we want some high contrast. So I'm just going to go pure black. And then with our foreground secondary, we're going to go at, let's say, 90% on this one. In fact, we can go lower than that. So let's go 60% and then let's go 40% on that one. Okay. So those are the colors we're going to be using. Now we're going to use those to create our variables. So if you click anywhere on the background and deselect anything here, and open up the local variables by clicking this icon here, you should get this uh, pop-up appear. Now, I'm not sure if variables is available for all account types on Figma. I have Figma Pro, so I do have access to it. If you do not have access to local variables, it could be based on your account type. I haven't actually checked if it's available on free accounts, but it's very useful um, to be working with variables. So I'd highly recommend upgrading to a paid account if it's not available for a free account. Okay, so now we're going to just build out our variables. Okay, so we're gonna have our color variables here and we're going to use the same naming convention here. So we're gonna have, uh, we're going to go with primary, secondary, and then tertiary. Okay, and then we have a look what we've got here. So we've got 100% and then we've got black 5% and black 10%. So we just need to go and put those in there. Five, and then ten percent. So that's our background. So I'm just going to select all of those and new group and call that background. Okay. So then I'm going to duplicate this so we can do this really quickly. And this is going to be our container. And our container primary is black five percent. And then we had, I believe, 10, and then we had 15. And then I'm going to duplicate that again, and this is going to be our foreground. And inside our foreground, we have pure black. Whoops. And then we had 60 and 40%. So 60 and 40. Okay. There we go. So that's our current values. So we've got background, container, and foreground. So to be able to do a dark and a light mode, we need to have the concept of a dark and a light mode. So let's go and build that now. So we're gonna have this string variable here, and we're going to have uh, light. Oh, no, sorry, we're gonna have, uh, we'll call this mode. This can be light and then just drag this out of it. We're going to add a new column here and this is going to be called dark. And I'm going to group that into a new space called mode. And I'm gonna stick that at the top there. Okay, so as we can see here, we've got our different modes here. And I'm just going to change that and that to dark. There we go. So now we've got light and dark values for all of the above here. Okay, so if we go into our background, we're just going to do the reverse for dark mode. Now you probably want to spend a bit more time figuring out what colors you want to be using for your light and dark, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to do the reverse. So like that and just keeping it really simple. Okay, so that is all our colors done and that's all our variables created.
So we can leave this for now. This is uh, pretty much good to go. Okay, so if we build out a, f a frame here and apply our background to it, we can come in here and you'll see that under uh, clicking these four circles here, you now have all your variables here available to you. So I'm going to set that to primary and now we have our background primary driving the color fill for this frame. Okay, so we're going to call this uh, design. In fact, no, we're not. We're going to call it light. So we know it's light mode. Okay. And if we hold down the Alt key or just create a duplicate in another way, call this one dark, you'll be able to see how we can have both light and dark modes very easily. So you can build one design and then have your uh, dark mode equivalent. And to do that, we go onto the light, click this kind of um, hexagon icon here and click apply variable mode. Under whatever we've called our collection one, you can see that we have our auto light and we have our light and dark mode. So I'm going to set this one to light, even though it's on auto light, I'm going to set it to light. And then this one I'm going to select and call it dark. So automatically we have our light and dark mode using the same uh, Figma variable here. So it's background primary and background primary. And what is driving the color there is the mode that we set. And we can see that we have those here like this. I'm not even sure if I need this mode thing here. Just having these uh, titles here should probably be enough. Um, it's when I build out more complicated systems, I like to have these uh, available to me um, for other areas, but I don't think you need it in this example here. So I'm just going to rename my collection to something else. Uh, my design system. Cool. And then you'll be able to see that's reflected here. Okay, so now we're going to build out uh, just a very, very quick um, design. And I'm going to delete the dark mode one for now. So I'm going to grab a frame here. I'm going to drag it down. And we're going to make that one our background secondary. And then I'm going to have a header bar along the top, like so. And again, I'm really not focusing on the colors too much here. This is just a demonstration. Uh, so, so this is going to be our background tertiary. So we can see that there are some different colors there. And then I'm going to just chuck in uh, a few really basic ideas here. Uh, so we're just going to have this one as a container. So this is our container primary. Let's give that nice rounded corners. And let's add some text to that as well. My container. And again, we're just keeping it super simple. And I'm just going to add an auto layout to that. So I press shift A and add that to that. Get rid of those corners there. Again, I'm grabbing these two here, these two frames here and adding a shift A to those. So they're now grouped inside of an auto layout. And so then I'm just going to move that to the left there. Okay, so our background for the whole container can be our primary. Should we, yeah, let's go primary. And then like so. Don't worry too much about what I'm doing here. And then our text here, so this is our foreground. So we need to give this our foreground color. So if we scroll down and give it our foreground primary, like so. And then I'm just going to duplicate this a few times. So we've got a few different um, items here. I'm going to shift A again so it's inside of an auto layout. Apply it so it does some wrapping. And fix that width to that, like so. And here's our really basic design. Okay, so we've come up with our design uh, and we want our dark mode. Because we've used tokens for every single item in here, when we copy it across and do our dark mode equivalent, 
just sending it to dark mode, we instantly have our dark mode. And that's how easy it is to create um, designs for light and dark mode at the same time using Figma's local variable system and using the method I've shown in this video. Now you can expand this uh, to a much more complicated design system and, and it can really speed up your workflow. So if you spend a lot of time working on your colors and really thinking about what you want to use for your buttons or your different items, having a nice uh, color system with high contrast that passes accessibility, you can build out your light and dark modes at the same time doing the design once, as long as you've come up with a good color system initially. So I do recommend investing a lot of time into that initial work around the color system, um, which will save you a ton of time down the line, as we can see here. So this video is roughly 15 minutes, and that was me just making it up as I went along. So hopefully that shows just how easy it is to do this, and I hope you find this useful. Please let me know in the comments below if you like this idea. If you have some better methods, please do share them below as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.